In today's video, I'm gonna show you my top five picks for budget graphics cards. We're gonna benchmark the heck out of them and even do some serious price to performance analysis. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. So here in front of me, I have what I think are the top five budget graphics cards for here in mid 2020 on both the new and the used market. And if you're new here and you wanna see other PC hardware videos just like this one, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check these cards out. UCDKeys.com is a new online platform that sells all types of games and software keys, but most importantly, those Windows 10 Pro keys. UCD Keys is hooking you guys up with a crazy 20% off sale if you use discount code ZT20. For those of you that are still rocking an unactivated version of Windows 10 with that nasty watermark in the bottom right hand corner, click the first link in the description, select buy now, and enter the discount code ZT20. And as you can see here, that drops the price down to $13, which is amazing. This is actually my personal method of activating Windows 10 on my build guide. So if you're interested in doing the same thing, head on down to the first links in the description. All right, so for this video, we're actually going to want to do the benchmarking earlier than we usually do. That way we can analyze both the results and the cost. But before we do that, let's introduce the cards that we're working with. Starting with the AMD side of things, these two choices are pretty obvious to most of you. This is the RX 570 and the RX 580, both the 8 gigabyte models. I actually just featured these two cards plus the RX 560 in my 560 vs 570 vs 580 video, and it's no surprise to anyone that these cards made the list. Where things get a bit more difficult are the Nvidia side of things. Here I decided to go with the GTX 970, GTX 1060, and the GTX 1650. And before all the GTX 970 VRAM jokes, the reason why it made my list today is because when this card initially launched like five or six years ago, it was selling like absolute madness. So a ton of people had this card and with the normal rate of upgrading outside of us enthusiasts, which is every couple of generations, the 970s are now being sold a ton on the used market today. Shifting over to the GTX 1650, this one isn't necessarily the best value in terms of frames per dollar, which we'll analyze later in the video. But the reason I'm including this is because of the models that don't require an external power cable from your PSU. Now, not all GTX 1650s are like this. The one I have here, which I'll link everything down in the description, only uses the 75 watts from the motherboard's PCIe connector, and that's why this card makes my list. I'm sure you've seen by now that these 1650s are absolutely perfect for upgrading or even flipping used OEM desktop machines like HPs or Dell Optiplexes. Not having to rely on external power is a huge benefit, and this card definitely fits this niche quite well. However, with that being said, at the time of recording this video, yet another style of the 1650s are releasing now with G. GDDR6 memory instead of GDDR5. Apparently there's now a worldwide shortage of GDDR5, so that's why they started creating them with the GDDR6. This one indeed does have the five, but apparently with the all those slower clock speeds, that faster memory will produce a couple of more frames per second. So just remember that for this video. And finally, one more thing to remember with these cards that I have here, this model of the GTX 1060 is only a three gigabyte version. I would certainly recommend the six gigabyte model, but I couldn't get my hands on one at the time of making this video. So just know that when you see today's testing, the six gigabyte model will indeed have a few more FPS as well. For our testing rate today, the CPU that I chose was the Ryzen 5 3400G. Like I've stated before, a lot of you picked up a Ryzen APU years or months ago and are looking to purchase a dedicated GPU. So I think this is the most realistic option that this GPUs would be paired with. A lot of you were complaining in my last benchmarking video that I didn't use a 2600 or a 1600 AF or whatever your recommendation was. I think a lot of you are forgetting that I'm just a normal dude down here making videos. I do have a lot of components, but I don't necessarily have access to every single component exactly when I need it, at least not yet. So just don't be upset if I'm not using a 100% super optimized CPU for my benchmarking. It it's just not realistic and that would be super expensive. Outside of that though, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM clocked to 3000 megahertz and every game is installed on an ADATA SSD. So without further ado, jumping straight into the benchmarks, we'll start with Fortnite. Got myself yet another nice double kill while filming for you guys, so that always gets me fired up. And with 1080p and pro settings, which is all low but epic view distance, here are the results that I got. As you can see, the RX 580 comes out on top like expected, but all five of these GPUs can maintain above 144 FPS with these settings. Next up was Counter-Strike Global Offense 
expensive, sorry I couldn't squeeze in its Valorant replacement yet, but here in 1080p and Pro settings, this ladies and gentlemen looks like a CPU bottleneck for the most part. All of these GPUs minus the GTX 1650 perform pretty closely to the exact same results given that our Ryzen 5 3400G is probably the limiting factor for the CPU demanding game. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege, and with the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and high settings, all of these actually got pretty similar results except for the RX 580 which soared past them all. Following that was PUBG, so hard to record a kill for this game, sorry for the bad footage, but in 1080p and medium settings we got our biggest fluctuation with the GTX 970 actually performing significantly lower than the RX 580. Getting into the harder run games, we have Borderlands 3. I've been really enjoying recording footage for this one lately and progressing through the story mode, but with the benchmarking tool in 1080p and medium settings, here are the results with the 1060 getting the lowest FPS this time, probably due to the 3 gigabytes of VRAM. Following that was Gears 5, also used the built-in benchmarking tool for this one, and in 1080p and medium settings, all of these GPUs were right on par with each other around that 60 FPS target mark. Speaking of which, we got pretty much the exact same thing as The Division 2, also used 1080p and medium settings for this one, and every GPU is neck and neck with each other. Moving on, we get to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I didn't benchmark in a Warzone game because it's a bit trickier to get consistent results, but these results should translate well to the Warzone mode, and in 1080p and normal settings, the RX 580 once again got the best results with the 1650 at the bottom, but all still well above 60 FPS. Following Cobb was Apex Legends, also another one that I don't really enjoy recording, but I did get a kill for this one, and in 1080p and high settings, to my surprise, the 1650 got the highest results, but as always, just remember that consistency in a huge battle royale game is quite difficult to achieve. And finally, to end our massive 10 game benchmarking run is Monster Hunter World, and in 1080p and medium settings, the GTX 970 and 1650 actually achieved less than 50 FPS, and this one is still definitely tough to run. Okay, so now we know how these cards are running. It's not really news, we knew that the RX 580 was gonna win most of these runs, but now that we have that data, we need to compare it with the current market price to find out which one is achieving the best bang for your buck. To determine market prices, I first had to decide which cards I would find the new prices for and which ones I would find the used prices for. After a pretty tough debate in my head, I decided that we should find the used prices for every card except the GTX 1650. The 1650 is just too new of a card to buy on the used market in my opinion, you'll only ever save like 10 to $20 on it, and that's just not worth giving up the warranty and the guarantee that it works, etc. I was heavily debating about the RX 570 and RX 580 as well. You can get both of these GPUs brand new for some really nice prices since they go on sale quite often, but the fact that they've been on the market for so long now and that the used market is just flooded with them made me choose used prices for these. I'm about to show the average prices, but you can easily find either of these GPUs for under $100 on eBay sometimes if you're patient. All right, so as promised, here are the results that I got for the current market prices of all five GPUs. To find the average of the used graphics cards, I averaged out the last 20 completed auctions on eBay, and for the GTX 1650, I just found $160 to be the lowest, easy to achieve price. For both categories, I highly suggest you waiting to snipe these cards below the average prices, however. Okay, so now that we have the benchmarking data and the market prices, it's now time to choose a winner in terms of price per frame. Keep in mind that price per frame won't mean a lot to you if you're just looking to get the best absolute performance. In that case, you probably just want to go with the RX 580, but I don't think a lot of you were expecting the winner that I'm about to announce. After calculating price per frame, based on averaging all the FPS results with the average market prices that I saw, the GTX 970 is actually producing the best price per frame for today's testing with 92 cents per frame. As you can see from the chart here, all of our used graphics cards are actually pretty close to each other, so in terms of value, you really can't go wrong with any of them. And like I said, the GTX 1650, although not nearly as valuable on this chart, it still serves a very important purpose, so that's why I included it. Now, before going crazy down in the comment section, there are definitely some key factors to keep in mind outside of FPS and price. The first one up is power consumption. The RX 580 is going to consume a significant amount of more power compared to the 1650, for example, so if you're trying to build a lower power consuming build, keep that in mind. There's also the amount of VRAM, as we all know, more and more games are utilizing above four gigabytes these days. The GTX 970 has a ton of FPS per dollar, but with only 3.5 gigabytes of high-speed VRAM, that card isn't going to be nearly as quote unquote future proof as an eight gigabyte RX 580. Overall though, to be completely honest with you, you really can't go wrong with any of these five graphics cards. The GTX 970, 1060, RX 570, and RX 580 are all dominating the price to performance charts for the last year or two, and they've served us builders quite well. The 1650 isn't there in terms of price to performance, but if you're looking for an easy to find brand
brand new graphics card with a warranty that doesn't need external PSU power, that'll be your best bet. Well, that's going to wrap up what I think are the top five graphics cards here for mid 2020. As always, kind of scared to say this. Let me know what you thought about this testing down in the comment section down below. And after that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you're following me over on Twitch because we got some more PC building content coming over there very soon.